You see the episode last night we did with uh, on uh, Ruby Ridge? If you watch that Ruby Ridge, Waco is kind of a sketchy story. You don't really know on Waco which way. Ruby Ridge is sh- cut and dry. Cut and dry. The guy went, finally he got, went to jail. They were pushing for the execution of the guy uh, from Ruby Ridge. Pushing for execution. Yeah, that shot Mrs. Uh, uh, Weaver. No, no, no. <clears throat> no? No. Mr. Weaver. Oh, you're Randy. The yes. state. Randy Weaver. The state was yeah. going for execution. Yeah. And the case was so bad that when uh, once the prosecution finished, the defense stood up and said, Your Honor, I rest my case. They had nothing? They had nothing to say. <laughs> the defense said nothing. <laughs> nothing. Uh. And he walked out. It was so bad. And you know what it was? It was on a gun control issue. Mm-hmm. They set him up. Mm-hmm. They said, the, the guy went to him. This is what's so bad about it. The, guy, the uh, FBI agent went to him and said, hey, man, can you sell me your shotgun? And he's like, no, I don't really want to sell my shotgun. And he became friends with him. He's like, come on, I really want that shotgun. And he's like, okay. And so they're standing there, you know, and he's got a shop and everything else. And he's like, could you cut that new shotgun for me? You want to cut the barrel off? Yeah, would you just cut the barrel off? Now it's a shot, off, sawed-off shot. When he's selling it to him, it's not a sawed-off shotgun. But the transaction hasn't gone through. And so the FBI agent says, will you, will you just saw that off for me? Um, okay, yeah, I guess so. I've got the tools. Let me go on to the shed. Okay, where do, I, where do I cut it? Oh, I know the law. You cut it this amount. Well, it was wrong by one quarter inch. One quarter inch. And the FBI mm. agent was the one who measured it and told him exactly where to cut it. That I didn't that know. That is mm. how it happened. Mm. Yeah. That's how it happened. Wow. So the government set him up on a technicality on a, dr- on a, on a gun thing. Jeez. And that ended up with his wife getting shot in the head by an, uh, an FBI agent and mm-hmm. his son being shot uh, in the back and killed. Mm. And he was shot in the back by an FBI agent because they set him up. If you don't think that all of these new regulations, they will find a way, just like they did with Randy Weaver, they will find a way. Now, what are you going to do with that information? The last thing you do is what Randy Weaver did. Holing up because they'll kill your family. They will. These guys are bad people. The people we are dealing with in this administration, they are bad people. If you think Janet Reno was bad, she ain't nothing. By the way, it was a Republican administration that did uh, Ruby Ridge. That was George H.W. Bush. Mm-hmm. So it happens with progressives on both sides. On both sides. The last thing you do is hole up. The thing you do is you find yourself a great attorney. You find yourself surrounded by people who will say, you take him, you take me too. And you take me to jail. Not out, you know, with guns ablazing. You take me to jail because I'm going to see you in court. I am taking you to court. There are attorneys that will represent you, but they are going to start all of these regulations. They're going to start nailing people. And we got to stand together. Got to stand together because progressives, you know, I was reading about the Dutch National Socialist Movement, otherwise known as the Nazis. And I thought, man, it doesn't matter what they call it, the National Socialist Movement. It's always the same. Always the same. Last night on the TV show, I went over Ruby Ridge, and I was telling the guys in the break about Ruby Ridge, and, you know, we, we tell me what you think you know about Ruby Ridge, Stu. Uh, um, that there was some, they were suspicious of this guy. He was kind of living in the middle of nowhere with his family. Uh, they, they came onto his property because he had some sort of violation, uh, and he started firing at them. Uh, they, they wound up firing back, hit his son and his wife, mm-hmm. uh, and he lived. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, my, you know, that's kind of the more standard mainstream maybe telling of it. I, I mean, my, my perception of it is that they acted, uh, uh incorrectly. They acted stupidly. The Sometimes the police, the government the or the weavers? Stupidly. The government. The government. Okay. Pat, can you take any mainstream addition to that? Mm, well, my understanding of it was that, yes, again, they were suspicious of him. and, and Why his, were they suspicious of him? I, You know, that was unclear. I thought it was about a gun stash. Okay. Um, so he had a bunch of guns. A bunch of guns. And he also wouldn't if, give them up. We, did anybody remember that he was a uh, white supremacist? Yeah, okay. That yeah, I'd yeah, forgotten right? about, mm-hmm. but I, I think okay. I knew that yeah. initially. Okay. Uh, and then they surrounded the place. They put cameras up. They watched him. Then they did this siege. During the siege, his son went out 
because well, his, you don't have to tell the whole story. Just give oh. me the rap. Okay. Well, you asked me what I know, yeah, so I, I know. was trying to tell so you his what, son I, was, what I knew. His son was shot and killed. His sixteen-year-old. The dog was shot and killed. The son was shot and killed. His wife's face was blown off. Yeah. Okay. It is awful. All right. And what happened to him, Randy Weaver? He was shot and then recovered and was put on trial and exonerated. What happened to the FBI or anybody else involved? Nothing that I know of. Okay. Let me tell you the real story. This is what happened at Ruby Ridge. Now, you tell me, you tell me that the government won't use regulation to use you and squeeze you, and they don't care about you. They'll use you and squeeze you in any way for the greater good. Okay. Now, see if there's any correlations where you might fit into this story in the coming years. And then let's talk about the lessons you learn from this. The biggest lesson you can learn from this is be extraordinarily careful with your weapons and get an attorney. Okay. Here's what happened. Randy and his wife and his children live in Iowa and they think that society is melting down. They just think things are going crazy. I mean, it's just not. It's just, this isn't a healthy environment to raise kids. And keep in mind, this is 1990, 91, 90, 92, by the time yeah, they leave 90, and this 91 happens. 91 92, yeah. And so they decide they're going to live out in the middle of nowhere. And they don't want to bother anybody. They just, they, just, they just believe that they need to grab their kids and teach them how to live, how to hunt, how to be, you know, decent people. So they build a house. They buy a piece of property in Idaho, in up, up northern Idaho. And this part of Idaho has some white supremacists um, living in there. Um, and by the way, I believe this is the same place where like Ben Stein kind of lives in this general area. Ben's not a white supremacist. Okay. Now, yeah, you, I think it's the same general vicinity where Demi Moore and uh, Ashton Kutcher lived, right? Uh, I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. So he lives, he moves over there, and but he just wants to be left alone. To get to his house, you have to take a three-mile dirt road, which then turns into two miles of even rougher dirt road before you reach his house. Okay? Middle of nowhere on private property, 20 acres. Well, he's there, and he's with his son, uh, his sons, his, uh, uh, his wife, and his uh, family dog. And they just live in the life. Now, here's where... The only thing that you can't excuse in this is he decides, friend, I guess, says to him, hey, you should come to this. Um, it's not the Aryan Nation. What's the other supremacist group? Uh, uh, I can't remember. But mm -hmm. he, he decides, uh, you know, to go check these guys out. And so he checks them out. Now he goes to a few meetings. Every indication is he's not deeply involved with these guys. He's not like a warrior for them. It's Christian identity or something like that. Um, and you know, but a, I don't go to a Christian identity meeting. If I do go to one, I realize quickly who they are. And I'm like, okay, <clears throat> I'm going to excuse myself now. <laughs> you guys, Hey, you guys are great. Nothing wrong. Yeah. See you later. Bye-bye. You're not going back no matter how good the punch is. No, I'm not going by. And I bet they do have punch, but I'm not going back. But I just want you to point out, this is a flare in the road here. It's a group that the government thinks is dangerous. There's nothing, there's nothing illegal about being a part of this group. You can have these points of views. As long as you're not breaking the law, you can have this point mm -hmm. of view. Yeah, no law mm -hmm. against being a dumb racist. Nope, none. So he goes, and unbeknownst to him and everybody else in this group, there's an FBI undercover agent, and they have infiltrated the group. 